Hello, today I'm going to be showing you one of the products called Parallel Flange Channels. I'm going to show you what it's about and how to use it. Um, if you are on this page, the product page, you can click on read more. You can see the list of sections that the model is based on. Right, so if you open the file that contains the files, you'll see that's the IPT file and then you have the material library file so the best thing to do is to put it in a temporary place first and then um, you're just going to load the material library on the file itself and then um, i'm going to show you how to work with it so if you do go to your inventor and you're going to open that file Right, so the first thing you'll notice is the, the form pops up. Um, I'm just going to go down and close this. Um, so we want to load the material library first. So the way to do that is to go to this little icon and it's the material parameters. And um, you're going to go to the bottom left corner, that little icon, and you're going to go open existing library. And then you're going to select that library that you got with the files go open now you'll notice the materials update so i'm going to close this i'm going to save it and then close that again and then you're going to go back to your original file that you opened and you're going to go and put it in your templates for your inventor so the way you can get to your templates location is to go to the projects window and then uh, you're going to go to folder options and templates right click edit you're going to copy that location and then you're going to open a new explorer and you're going to paste that location and that is the templates so you're going to create a new folder i'm going to call it ilogic models and you can copy the files and paste them in there so now back in inventor if you go new you can see that iLogic models folder that you just created then you can basically create the file then you can change the parameters and make it how you want and you can just go save it and save it where your project where your project location is okay so if you want to start changing the parameters um, you go to the forms tab and the very top one model parameters you can click on that to open the form and then you'll see this form um, okay so the designation is that list of sections that you saw on the website um, so you can just go and choose any one of these and then you have the materials okay if you would like to load any other material then i'm going to quickly show you how to do that i'm going to go to the rules tab and you can see the material list you can edit the rule and then you can just add a new material you can just copy one of them paste and then just rename it but uh, for that to work you need to you need to change the material or add a new material in this list over here so the best way to do that is just to right click on one existing one um, and you can just say duplicate you can rename it but that name has to correspond exactly to the name in the material list and then you can just edit it and you can change appearances you can change physical properties okay so I'm going to go back in the form um, and then this is just an indication of the mass uh, you can't edit this and then with the more parameters you can change the length so I'm just going to make this 1 meter 500 okay 
done. I'm just going to change this back to white. And then you get the starting end joint, the ending end joint. If you don't know where the joints is on the model, you can just flip it around. You can see there are labels marked on the model. So that would be your starting end joint. This would be your ending end joint, right? So if you click on the starting end joint, you'll see this window pops up. Um, this is just a little diagram of showing you what different joint types you get. Um, so if you go none, it's just a straight cut. You'll notice there's no feature attached to the end of this, this end. Okay, and then in type one, you can see the type one is just a normal angle cut. And then if you click on it, you can see the window pops up. Um, it just asks you for, a, for an angle. So if you just look at it over here, um, I'm just going to change this to 60. and changes the angle of the model. Okay, and then type 2 is just flipped around. So I'm just going to choose type 2. You see it just flips it around. And in the same story, you can just change the angle there. And then type 3 is the angle on this end. So you can see the angle through that way. Also change this to 60. And then type 4 is the angle just flipped around on this end. Okay, same story. And then type 5, you get a notch, just a normal clean notch like that. Uh, the notch is sized to to the same designation size as this channel here. So if you change the size of the channel, this notch would be adapted to the same size. Okay, the same six is also a notch, but this time it just has holes in it. Okay, so the holes brings up this window. This window is to do with the cleat that you want to attach to, to the end of this. Um, so you can just specify uh, the cleat parameters over here, so you get the cleat designation. So if you do change it, you'll notice the holes updates. This little diagram shows you um, the cleat size. So if you do go, okay, so this is an 80 by 80 by 6, so this is an equal angle line. So if you do go and change it to an unequal angle line like this, 90 by 65 by 10, you notice the cleat connecting side updates. So then you get a side one and the side two. Um, that's the side one label there, side two label there. So it just means that which side do you want to connect to this end? So if you do, do go to side two, you'll notice the holes update. And then it says the cleat that you use for this specific section is too short. So um, just make sure that if that window pops up, uh, you might experience errors with uh, with common practice in design. So I'm just going to go side one. I'm going to change this to, let's call it 50 by 50 by 5. Okay. And then the cleat length is that's the length that the cleat should be. Um, okay. And then the dimensions. Uh, this is just a confirmation of the dimensions on this cleat. All right, I'm going to go done. Okay, and then type 7 is also a cleat connection, but this time there's no notch. So this would be the same cleat arrangement. Okay, and then that's all the joint types you get. And then on the ending joint, you've got the same story. It's just everything's flipped around. Um, that's now for this end over here. And then you get intermediate holes. So the holes, it asks you which side do you want holes or which side is the holes applicable to. So if you intend to have holes in the top flange and in the side web, but not the bottom flange, then you would go and tick the top flange and the side web. So you can just choose which one um, which ones are applicable. Okay, so I'm just going to go done. I'm going to say the top flange holes. 
right? You can say which arrangement do you want for that? So this is now the holes there. So I don't want type two for argument's sake, I want type one. And then it gives you the diagram for that. So you can just go and change sizes. Um, the sizes correspond to that diagram over there. So you can just go ahead and change the sizes as you want. Now the back mark is on the top flange and in the bottom flange uh, predefined. So this would be standard practice for, doesn't matter what size designation section you have. The holes, the back mark on the hole should be fine. All right, so I'm going to go done. Um, um, on the side web, uh, you get different set of hole arrangements. Um, you can just see on the diagrams which hole types you would prefer. So what's nice about this is you can have a combination of different arrangements. So you can have for argument's sake type two and type five. So you can still use the different type of arrangements as you see fit. Now what's nice about this is if you have uh, a very special hole that you want to put in, you can just sketch on a model and just create the hole manually. Um, but the combination between all these, all these whole sets should be able to cover most of the whole arrangements that's required. Okay, going to go done, going to go done. And then this is a label toggle switch. So you can just um, switch it on and off as you see fit. And then at the very bottom, you get the, the sizes um, or the confirmation of sizes. Um, on based on the diagram. Okay, and that is it for this model. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you do have any questions regarding this model, um, you're more than welcome to post it on a forum or ask any questions on, on the video descriptions. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in our next tutorial. As always, please visit our website you can download iLogic 3D models over there, as well as visit the forum uh, where you can ask specific questions and get the answers from the masters.